Hey guys, so I took a break from FNM line pretty much uh, to play this deck, which I really wanted to play for a long time. It is Planeswalker, Abzin Planeswalker Control, and it is an incredibly fun deck, and I'll go over the deck list right now. Uh, so we got one Demonic Pack, I don't want more of that, it's pretty much a Planeswalker, a Liliana Vest, a Foil, a Johnny Mantle of Heroes, I'll explain him and what they do a little later. Uh, Liliana Heroic, Her Heroic, Heroic, no, Heretic, Heretic he Healer, wow, uh, Nisa, and Sorin. Sorin's actually probably your best Planeswalker to get on turn. On turn. You have Jamoker's Command, the Feast Main Lines, Death Dealers, two Den Protectors. Uh, it probably should go up to four, but I couldn't find any more. And a Feather, Rhinos, Murderous Cut, and Whisperwood Elemental. So this card is kind of like I want to cut it, and a lot of times I sideboard it out because it's not really that type of deck. But at the same time, it's actually it works really well together. The you go aggro, but you're going aggro with the to go over the top, and the planeswalkers help you go over the top. I'll explain each one. So Sorin's very easy. His life gain is extremely relevant in my meta, and the the creature, the two two flying vampire creature, also extremely relevant. This card is definitely good enough to see play and stand it for a very long time. I feel like after rotation, he's only going to get better. The card is insane, right? Uh. This card, I like it a lot. It is a unique way to create more creatures. Like, creating creatures all the time is what the deck wants to do, but it doesn't really want to keep playing creatures all the time. So, Nissa is very good. I enjoy her plus one a lot. I use her plus one, obviously, more than... I use her pl first plus one more than I use the second one, but at the same time, it's a very strong card. Now, let's talk about this card. This card is a fascinating card in this deck because the 2 free body lifelink is very relevant and you are not the type of deck that can race outrace a mono red. You are the type of deck that wants to dirt around a little bit and then have multiple planeswalkers on the field. Activate If you can get two to four planeswalkers on the field, you're good to go. Like your opponent is not going to be because some, again, you have planeswalkers, you have five of them that can create creatures. You have multiple creatures yourself. You just gotta protect your planeswalkers and win via accumulating effects. Liliana is one of the best planeswalkers flipped that you can play. Beautiful planeswalker, by the way. And the lifelink is actually so relevant. And the body, the 2 2 zombie, is extremely relevant. So the deck is pretty much Liliana's deck, to be honest. Now, a Johnny Mentor of Hero, very good. His second plus one I use more often. Uh, very, very good because you need to find your other Planeswalkers. And this card will do it for you. It'll keep finding Planeswalkers. Your Planeswalkers will keep protecting themselves. And then you can play some more Planeswalkers. Like, it's not a tier one deck. I don't want people to think it's going to win every FNM they go to. It's not. But man, is it fun to have four Planeswalkers on the field at the same time. And they're all like doing stuff and you're looking for more Planeswalkers. Yes, it's incredibly fun. And it's one of the funnest decks. And as I'm doing FNM Lion, which I play mono red and I'm just trying to win all the time, it gets exceedingly boring. So this is the perfect deck for me to relax and play with. Um, I love this Ajani, by the way, but I want to play more. So Liliana Vess. Uh, the reason Liliana Vess, in my opinion, is as, you know, she is as good as she is because of her minus two ability. Her minus two ability, looking for a creature, looking for any card you want. Wow, that's really relevant where you have after sideboarding, right? And demonic pack, sometimes you just look straight up for demonic pack. Now, oops. Now here's your sideboard, and I'll show you my like secret sideboard tech. It's just one. Uh, Under end, here was downfall, crux of fate. This is my secret tech. Oh. Oh, I'm missing four cards. Duh. I'm missing these. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, what, what happened? <laughs> Dossies, the life gain is extreme. The life loss is actually irrelevant, so I don't play the main board. Heroes Downfall, Crux of Fate, El Evolutionary Leap. I used to love it, now I don't as much. Other end. This is the best 
piece to get for Liliana because people are trying to gain life on you and create like crazy. Corsair Krufix, um, Rhinos. You cannot deal with life gain because although you are a long term deck, you do not want them to draw board wipe. And that's been the problem is I haven't been able, like I'm just dirtling around and then eventually they draw that card deck wipes out all my my entire board and I'm like, oh, cool. But anyway, Erebonos, um, Crux of Fate does not board wipe. Is there a board wipe? What are you trying to board wipe? Oh, they, what they do is they board wipe my side and then they attack into my planeswalkers and I've been negative because I'm having fun with them. I've been using them not in the most efficient way I should be using them and then they kill them. So that's what I mean by board wipe. Feed the Clan is probably the best card ever for this deck. It is, for, if you play one or two of them against an, a mono red deck, they cannot win. Because instead of starting at 20 life, you start at 40 life and that is a battle mono red cannot win because they're trying to do burn spells. So if you pay Ferocious, and Ferocious is very easy to trigger. You have Anna Feather, you have Rhino, you have uh, the Lion that can become Ferocious. You have uh, various Nissa can make you know Ferocious. It, it's very easy to turn on. I don't have any issues turning on. And Death Dealer can get up to Ferocious. So you're like, okay, instant speed, gain 10 life. Go. <laughs> That's, no, they're not going to recover from that. You got your Citadels, you got your Orgbog, Plains, Mountain, Where's Swamp? Two Swamps. Four Temples of Silence, Temple Plenty, Temple Malady, Waste, Four Waste, and Three Caves of Colossus. So you're taking a lot of damage. That's what I kind of want to explain to you guys. You are taking a massive amount of damage from your land. You're going to take a lot of damage from your cards that you play. Um, very, very difficult deck to navigate, but extremely fun deck. So I'm not playing it. It's not optimized, and I'm not playing it optimizedly. Optimized. I'm just playing it to have fun, but this is an incredibly fun deck, but it can also win games. Um, it is, there's nothing more fun in my opinion than having four planeswalkers tick up, some tick up, some tick down, some tick, you know, don't, you know. I, I, had, I used to have um, Nissa in here, the uh, one that flips over, and but I don't have her anymore. And I used to have Gideon here, but Gideon is too much aggro that I don't normally have two creatures that can attack with it until turn like four. So Gideon had to go. But the fun part about all these Planeswalkers is just playing them is fun. And having them, they support each other. They either create tokens that can help you know, block. They um, you know, create tokens or I think all of them create tokens. They look for cards that help. They can create tokens. Yeah, so out of the Planeswalkers, Shorin creates tokens, Nissa creates tokens, Liliana creates tokens, and then the two that do not create tokens are looking for Planeswalkers most of the time. So overall, probably the most fun deck I've played and definitely a nice change from Red Deck Wins. Uh, very, very fun deck.